If you're a serious history buff or survival-minded thinker, this is one of those topics that will grab you right away. Because what we're about to walk through isn't theory, it isn't romanticized folklore, and it isn't some modern prepper gimmick. These are real systems used for centuries by Chinese families who had no electricity, harsh winters, limited resources, and still managed to heat entire homes efficiently. Before we get into the details, make sure you hit that subscribe button, because this kind of deep historical knowledge is exactly what we dig up on The Prepper Historian. And trust me, this is one lesson you'll want in your personal archive. Let's start with the core idea that guided traditional Chinese home heating. The Chinese approach to heat was never about overpowering the cold. It was about controlling it, redirecting it, and using available thermal energy so efficiently that nothing was wasted. That mindset is why their methods work so well for off-grid preppers today. Instead of thinking in terms of heaters, they thought in terms of heat pathways, heat retention, and heat storage. If you've ever studied old fortresses or long-haul trading routes, you'll recognize the same principle. Efficiency keeps people alive. One of the oldest and most famous systems is the Kang bed stove. If you're not familiar with it, a Kang is a massive raised platform made of brick or clay, usually about the size of a bed. Underneath this platform runs a flue connected to the home's cooking stove, or fire pit. When the family cooked meals, the heat travelled through channels under the kang before exiting the chimney. The bricks absorbed that heat slowly and released it through the night. So a single fire served two purposes, preparing food and providing radiant warmth for hours with zero additional fuel. You can apply this principle off-grid very easily. Build a cob or brick bench along a wall and run the exhaust of a small outdoor-safe rocket stove or internal masonry stove underneath it through a simple flue tunnel. Even a basic L-shaped channel can store surprising amounts of heat if you use thick masonry. Let it charge during cooking and you have a warm sleeping or sitting surface all night. This is real, time-tested engineering, not a modern invention. Another key technique was controlling airflow and convection inside the home. Traditional Chinese homes weren't randomly built. Their orientation, layout and materials were chosen to trap heat where it mattered most. Thick walls made of rammed earth or brick acted as thermal batteries. Interior courtyards reduced wind tunnelling and created pockets of still air. Doors were aligned so cross-drafts could be controlled rather than allowed to steal warmth. If you want to apply this today, start by identifying where heat escapes in your home or shelter. Seal gaps near the floor since cold air settles. Hang thick fabric or wool at doorways to create chambers the way old Chinese homes use lattice screens. Even in a tent or off-grid cabin, dividing space into warm zones and buffer zones can drastically reduce fuel usage. It's the same logic behind ancient architecture, protect the warm core at all costs. Heat storage materials played a major role in staying warm. The Chinese relied heavily on dense heat-absorbing materials like ceramic tiles, clay, stone and brick. When heated, even briefly, they gave off warmth for hours. Floors in northern China were often made of brick for that exact reason. Families would sit and sleep close to thermal mass, rather than relying on the air temperature of the entire room. 
If you're prepping or living off-grid, well, place stones or bricks near a small safe fire, then move them into your living space once they're heated. Put them under a cot, beside your feet, or near the center of a shelter. You're essentially using miniature versions of a Kang system. Heated mass is predictable, safe when handled correctly, and honestly, incredibly efficient. Clothing and bedding strategies were just as important as architecture. Chinese winter clothing often used layered natural fibers, cotton, hemp, wool, silk, each serving a different purpose. Silk traps heat near the skin. Cotton layers manage moisture. Thick winter jackets, called mianao, sealed everything in. Bedding followed the same layered logic. Thick quilted blankets filled with cotton provided bulk insulation, while lighter layers handled moisture control. Even the best heating system fails if your clothing or bedding traps dampness. Try applying this historically proven method-thin moisture-managing layer closest to the skin, insulating middle layer, final barrier layer. It works whether you're winter camping, riding out a blackout, or heating a home without electricity. Fuel efficiency was treated like a science, not an afterthought. Most families didn't have endless wood supplies, so they burned crop stalks, reeds, straw-dried roots, and even compressed crop waste. They understood burn rates ventilation and how to stretch fuel by pre-drying everything and controlling airflow through stoves. Their stoves weren't open fireplaces bleeding heat into the sky. They were narrow, controlled burn chambers that channeled every calorie of heat into the kang or cooking pot. In practical terms, this is where a modern rocket stove or propane-free burner shines. The principle is identical intense heat in a small space with high efficiency. Even something as simple as a clay chimney cap or a brick heat riser can double your burn efficiency because you're controlling oxygen intake the way they did. They also mastered the art of microheating rather than whole room heating. It wasn't about warming the entire house to a comfortable temperature. It was about warming the spots where life happened. The kang, the cooking area, the family table. They heated people, not buildings. For off-grid survival, this approach is gold. Instead of trying to raise the temperature of a cold cabin, warm the bed area, your feet, your hands, and your core. Use heated stones, Kang-style benches, or small radiant heaters powered by biomass. In the end, the Chinese kept homes warm without electricity by respecting heat as a resource. They studied it, shaped it, redirected it, and stored it. That's why these systems lasted thousands of years and remain some of the smartest heating solutions ever created. If you're a prepper, historian, or someone who simply values old-world knowledge, mastering these systems gives you real skills you can apply in any grid-down scenario. If you learned something new today, make sure you subscribe to The Prepper Historian and share this guide with someone who appreciates serious historical knowledge with real survival value.